You're on page 805 in the Little Bibles. And this is a point, in essence, in where Jesus is getting prepared for this horrible crucifixion time. And he's in trial now, being tried by the parties that are after him and, and seeking to destroy him and his work. Um, it, it's, it's, it's something that each one of us should stop and focus on because there is somebody trying to destroy you and your work. There, there's a cane that is screaming in the world today. There's a, uh, a shaking going on in the world today. Uh, wherever it may be, anybody sitting here knows it's either happening to you or happening to some friends of yours or happening close by. People are being shaken. Confusion, people becoming violent. And it's all part of the age that you're living in and the change. It's, it's amazing to me that uh, there's such an ignorance about this, really. There shouldn't be. Uh, uh, you know, as soon as uh, we get to the end of August, the beginning of September, you're, you're out preparing by going to the store, buying your winter clothes or getting a new sweater or a jacket or whatever, because you know what's coming. You know what's coming. Here, nobody knows what's coming. This is exactly the same thing. You have 12 seasons of the year. You have 12 months, four seasons, 12 months. In the universe, there's 12 signs. But they all have the same impact on the earth as the seasons do, as the months do. And when you go from summer to winter, you prepare for it. You're going from Pisces to Aquarius, and everybody's standing around. Nobody has the idea. Nobody knows what's going on. You're changing from a universe and an earth that was focused on mercenary uh, material things, scientific discoveries and material things to uh, a universe that is now all of a sudden enveloping itself in spirit. Uranus is the ruling planet of this new age, and it's a spiritual planet. Jupiter was the ruling uh, planet of the, the last age, and it's a, it's a planet of banking and money and institutions. And all of that is falling down, collapsing all around you. But people are staring because they don't know what to do. It would be the same thing as if, you know, the cold winds came, the snow came, and you went out in the backyard with your bathing suit on looking for, you know, a wading pool. I mean, being totally ignorant of, of the month. And that's the way we are about the seasons of the universe, the cosmic seasons. So uh, it's good now to come and look at the Bible and begin to approach these things on the basis of how this book was written, not as a, as a story, but as a deep mystical truth, as a deep metaphysical truth. And let's look at it, and we'll see some things that I think you'll find interesting and enlightening and hopefully helpful to you, especially getting through this time. This is a, a, a very, this time can be filled with terror for people. Uh, every time Uranus has made its appearance, the ancients would tell you, and they've written, it will turn everything upside down. That's what Uranus does. It turns everything upside down. So all of the great traditional values that you've held to and have felt were so important are going to come crashing down. Yes, in the United States, the good old U.S. of A. It's all going to come crashing down just like it did over in Russia. So you have to prepare for it. But I mean, you just have to know that it's going to happen. And it doesn't make any difference who you vote for. That's irrelevant. I mean, that's small potatoes. It doesn't change anything. What's happening is a colossal cosmic thing. And uh, you say, well, I don't think I like that. Well, so what? You know, I mean, jump off, you know. <laughs> Get a plane and keep going. But, you know, sooner or later, you're going to land on the same earth and you're going to say, yeah, well, that's the way it is. But it's nothing to be afraid of once you understand what's happening. You know, if you're sitting in the, with your bathing suit on and not in the backyard and your wading pool and say, I don't think I like the winter. Well, so what? It's going to come anyhow and you're going to have to put a coat on. When you understand that this cosmic change is coming and you're going to have to put on a deeper covering of meditation, you should get closer to it, and you should get into the meditation. That's the only thing that protects people during this age. There is nothing else that will work, absolutely nothing. Okay. Otherwise, you're, you're just totally at the mercy of what's going to happen, and you don't want to be in that kind of a position. But let's take a look at this, Matthew 26. And look at verse 63. Here's Jesus is on trial, okay? And it says, uh, Matthew 26 and... Verse 63, Jesus held his peace, and the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure you by the living God that you tell us whether you be the Christ, the Son of God. I want you to look at I adjure. That word adjure, A-D-J-U-R-E, is a solemn command. That's what it means. Now, notice something. This is Jesus Christ on trial. This is the one that... You know, Christianity has taken the name of Christ, 
This is the one that you have on your bumper stickers. This is one that all the churches say is the Lord. This one, this Jesus Christ, is on trial. And he's coming up against two. Not, you know, not some Lidnick from down the street who's uh, on patrol for the local Roman government. He's coming up against the high priest who is calling upon the name of the living God to accuse this Jesus Christ. I mean, this is like a Billy Graham or uh, a Pope John or whomever. These are the exalted high religious leaders who are using the Bible and the scriptures coming against a strange man saying, hey, there's something wrong with you. You are totally out of line with the law. You're totally out of line with the Bible. You're totally out of line with everything that is holy and righteous. And I am commanding you to tell us where did you get this and I am invoking the name of the living God to force you to tell us. So this is what you've got and we're, you're standing on the side of the guy who's bucking the establishment here. You're standing on the side of the guy who is bucking the religious groups and these high ecclesiastical people, religious authority. The high priest is making a demand by the authority of God against Jesus and that's exactly what we're looking at. Now, you have to understand something. This high priest is the solemn, supreme authority. He's the supreme authority, the supreme religious authority. I mean, this is the kind of guy they poured oil on his head, and, and, and he was concentrated to God. Look at page 765 in your Bibles, and, and the rest of you, you'll find this in the book of Zechariah. You can find it. It's very near the end of the Old Testament. Uh, others are 765. If you look at Zechariah chapter 3, page 765. Zechariah chapter 3 and verse 1. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan sitting at his right hand to resist him. This was the, this was the credentials of the high priest. He was regarded as one who stood in the presence of God and face Satan face to face. I mean, this is the guy that's standing against Jesus Christ and saying, hey, I'm giving you a command by the authority of God which has been given to me to open your mouth up and tell me what you're up to. Because what was happening right here is the religious institutions and the high priests and the ecclesiastical authority were coming against Jesus Christ in the exact same way that the religious institutions come against uh, New Age people today and Edgar Casey today. It's the same thing, exactly the same thing. He was being, Jesus was being summoned by the highest part of religion to say, hey, where the heck are you getting this stuff you're teaching people? Because you're, you're filling these people's heads with a lot of stuff and it's going to get them in trouble. And I'm, and, I'm, and I'm evoking the name of God to tell you, you better open up and tell me where, where the heck you're getting this from and who's telling you this stuff. So the high priest then becomes the ultimate authority of God on earth. And remember something, that this high priest position was created by Moses. I mean, do you people walk around, and people walk around with Bible say, I believe everything the Bible said. This high priest position was created by Moses. And the authority was granted to that high priest by the name of the living God. And this high priest was using that authority to come against one that he regarded as a heretic. And that was Jesus. So it's an interesting thing. Because this same religious authority will come against you today. And they'll say it exactly the same way. What right do you have to say? I've been told this all the time. What right do you have? Where do you get this stuff from? You are filling people's heads with a lot of stuff. This is exactly the same thing that the high priest was saying to Jesus. Exactly the same thing that people say to me. And exactly the same thing that they'll say to you. If you start talking about this. And of course, if you... You know, keep quiet about it and duck in the closet. Ain't nobody going to know. So, you know, who cares? They don't really care about that. But once you start threatening the existence of the religious system, you are now threatening. I mean, it was Jesus Christ coming against the high priest, the lineage of tradition, and right back to Moses and the traditions of the Judeo-Christian ethic. And that's what we, he was in trouble about. See? So this religious authority is one. And what's the question? The question is how... Can you be the Son of God? Where the heck do you get off at saying that you're the Son of God? And that's exactly the same question that the religious people of today ask you. Where do you get off at thinking such a thing? Where do you get off at saying such a thing? How is it possible? In Galatians 2.20, the Apostle Paul says, I live, yet I, not I, Christ lives in me. But what I want you to look at is page 996 in those little Bibles. 
The rest of you go all the way back just before the book of Revelation to the book of 1 John, okay? 1 John, and it's in page 996, okay? Now, 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 here's the thing. I want you to look at with me for a minute. Jesus Christ was being raked over the coals by the religious people because he was referring to himself as the Son of God. And you'll find Christians today who say, do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? And you're supposed to say, well, I do, and I certainly do. But you have no part in that as far as they're concerned. You're a worthless sinner. You're a worthless sinner. You're, you should be on a guilt trip, and you should be under all kinds of depression. You should come down on your knees and, and say some prayer, a sinner's prayer, you should say. A sinner's prayer. What did you do? What the heck did you do? Think about that. What did you do that qualifies you for being a sinner? You probably don't even know. But you bought it. Oh, yeah, I'm a worthless sinner, so you want a guilt trip most of your life. Never knew what you could do, where, where, but if you start thinking about it, write your sins down. You don't know what the heck they are. You'd be the same thing as when you went to confession when you were a kid. I said 13 bad words. Uh, what else? What did you do? You didn't do anything. Right? And, and most of the stuff you did is because you got something in your mind that you didn't want to do anyhow, but your mind told you to do it. But why all the guilt? Now look at this. Look at, look at 1 John chapter 3. What's it say in the Bible? What manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us? That we should be called the sons of God. Now look at verse um, 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. So here's the Bible saying you are the sons of God. Here's Jesus Christ saying you are the light of the world. Here's Jesus Christ saying the things that I do you can do, you can do better than me. And yet here's religion that can't deal with it. Can't believe it. No, it can't be you. You must be a worthless sinner. That's not what the book says. I, was, I did the light bulb thing last night with people. They, they ate that up. That was the most exciting thing to them. You know, the light bulb. Because what are you? You know, do it again. Some new people here. Here's the light bulb. What are you? Are you the light bulb that carries the light? Or are you the light that the light bulb carries? What's going to You are a light bulb. You are inside of a light bulb. It's the same thing. When your light bulb burns out, you're going to get another light bulb. They're going to screw you right back into the source of the power, and the light comes on. Because the light is eternal. You're not the light bulb. You're the light. You are a never-ending source of enlightenment if you'll allow yourself to be. You are special people. Start telling your children that they're special. Stop telling them that they're sinners. Stop telling it. Stop letting religious people infect the minds of children with the fact that they're sinners, and you won't have children needing to go on drugs when they're teenagers. The reason that the kids are on drugs and packing guns and all that is because religion and parents have convinced them that they're worthless. So if you're worthless, you're never going to be able to achieve, you're never going to be able to accomplish, you might as well go blow somebody else's brains out, or you might as well burn your own brain up with all of this junk, because you've been told. you were Here you have in New Mexico, they had a Little League game, and the parents were punching each other in the nose and wiping each other out because of some kid. And the, and the kids had to come on the television and say, why don't these adults grow up? Why don't they get out of the out of the out of the games that children play? Leave them alone. And all of this is creating stress, and all of this is creating guilt. Kid drops the ball, he's guilty because he let his father down. And so then you never ever understand. You come to the point in your life, you're 40, 50, 60 years old, you've never understood that Jesus is the Son of God, and so are you every bit as much of the Son of God as Jesus Christ was, because he said it, and the Bible said it. It's religion that won't allow you to know that. And the reason that religion won't allow you to know that is because then you become a threat to them just as he was. Jesus Christ didn't get killed because he formed a new religion. Jesus Christ got killed because he became a threat to the system. And anybody that's a threat to the system, you stick your neck out. And that's what you have to do. Otherwise, you're going to be one of them. And otherwise, the world is, is going to go right down the tube. So the answer 
We are the Christ. We are the Son of God. You just read it in the Bible. The Son of God. But religion can't handle that because they've changed the meanings. And they've changed the meanings and the stuff so that they can control. But you see the problem with this? If you are the Christ as Jesus says you are, if you are the Son of God as Jesus says you are, Christ cannot be controlled by the system. Sons of God cannot be controlled by the system. So you're a threat. See, they have to put their collars on, and they have to put their robes on, and they have to put their fancy hats on, and they have to strut out, and they have to control who? You, the mob. And you're sitting here, and you keep quiet, and you're not allowed to say anything. You get up, put some money in the pot, sing a song or two, and get the heck out of here, and come back next week and do it again. But don't ask any questions. Don't say anything. Shut up. Who, oh, by what right do you have to say anything? In our church, I am the authority. I have the authority of the word of God. And you shut up. It's exactly what's being said here. It's exactly what they said to Jesus Christ. By what right do you have? Who are you? You slippers? You got sandals on your long hair. You are stinking. You're coming down here telling all these people and stuff. Get all these people riled up. Get them out of And Jesus is standing there. Too. Because he knew. What did he know? Where did he get this from? Where did he understand these things from? Because when I was speaking at the, at the uh, ARE meeting the other night about Edgar Cayce, here was a man, that was Edgar Cayce, he was a fundamental Bible teacher, fundamentalist. He would come in every Sunday, now I lay me down to sleep, you know, and God, and sing the AB, and all this is all this guy did. But suddenly something happened. He was overwhelmed and consumed by the Holy Spirit and began to do signs and wonders and work miracles, and he became an outlaw to the church. As soon as he was consumed by the Holy Spirit, the church hated him. He became a cult. Stay away from him. Don't read any of his stuff. Because he became a threat. All of a sudden, if I had, he wasn't the high priest. And how could he be doing this stuff if he wasn't the high priest, you know? And he was doing it anyhow. So anyhow, when, uh, uh, if you go, let's go back to page 805 where we were in the book of Matthew. And on Matthew 26, where we started this thing, and Matthew 26, verse uh, 64, Jesus, uh, the guy says in 63, I assure you by the living God, you tell us whether you be the Christ, the Son of God. And Jesus says, that's what you say, something. Okay. It's all right. I ain't saying nothing. I didn't say I ain't. I didn't say I am. I didn't say I ain't. I'm not saying nothing. So he condones it. I am the Son of God. And what is he saying? Everybody who wants to be the Son of God. Everybody who wants to be the Christ, do you want to, you got a choice in this life. You and your children and your family and your friends can all be worthless wretches, as religion has said you are, or you can be the sons of God, the Christ. What do you want to be? And you know what? Almost to a man, people say, I'd rather be a worthless, snubbling, groping sinner. You know why? Because you don't have to get involved that way. You can sit in your chair and shake. <laughs> and hope that there's some religious guy that can come and lay hands on you and save you. And the guy that's laying hands on you, unfortunately, is ten times more screwed up than you'll ever be. But you don't know that, because he's got a robe on you. What the heck has he been doing in the midnight hour? You don't know, but he's laying hands on you. He's going to touch you. It's great, isn't it? But look what he says. In verse 64, nevertheless, I say unto you, hereafter shall you see the Son of Man. Now watch, this is very mystical. Nevertheless, hereafter shall you see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. That's mysticism. It's a deep mystical statement. The Son of Man is human. The Son of Man is that part of you. It doesn't mean man in the sexual connotation of man. It means mankind. The Son of Man is a human aspect inside of you that has the ability to become Son of God, if you will allow it. Look at uh, page 140 in your Bible, and the rest of you go to the book of Numbers. Page 140 and... In the book of Num, uh, the rest of you go to the book of Numbers, and Numbers chapter 23, okay, page 140, Numbers chapter 23, and verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie; neither the son of man that he should repent. Say, but now I want to show you something. Where is the son of man inside of you? 
Where is that potential that you have? You're sitting here, some of you bored, some of you, there he is, ranting and raving again. Say, here he is, saying all this stuff, but I don't know how I can do this. There's a part of you that is the son of man. That is a part of you that is the carnal nature. You're very comfortable with that. But where is that part of you that is son of man that can blossom into son of God? I'll show you where it is. Page 505. It's in the book of Psalms. Page 505, the book of Psalms, and you're in Psalm number 80. Psalm number 80. And verse 17. I'm going to show you. Where is it inside of you the Son of Man can be converted into that which is Son of God? Verse 17. Let thy hand, this is talking to God, be upon the man of thy right hand upon the Son of Man whom you made strong for yourself. There is a part inside of you that is strong. It is not weak. It is not a sinner. It is not in any kind of distress. It is not in any kind of depression. It is not in any kind of guilt. It is strong. It is made strong. It is ready to unleash itself for you to overcome the illnesses, to overcome the oppressions, to overcome the depressions. And it is at the right hand of power. It's the right hemisphere of the brain. It is the Son of Man which is made strong, waiting for you to come and cast your net to the right side, waiting for you to begin to think vertically, think laterally instead of vertically and open up the right hemisphere of the brain. That's where the Son of Man is. The Son of Man sits at the right side. Don't you understand this? The Son of Man is the right hemisphere of your brain. And you can actually activate the Son of Man by activating the right hemisphere of the brain by beginning to think, think by beginning to think laterally instead of vertically. You can activate the Son of Man. And when you activate the Son of Man, it rises up and to become the Son of God. You can do it. You can do it at home. You can do it in the bathroom. You can do it in the car. You can do it all by yourself. You don't need a church. You don't need a priest. You don't need a minister. You don't need any money. That last part should really turn you on. You don't need anything. All you need is your commitment and your dedication to do it. That's all. And you know what? That's the hardest thing of all. You'd rather spend money. Send Tilton a hundred bucks. He's a crook. Send him another hundred bucks. <laughs> Crooks like to get money. And if you don't have cash, he'll take your credit card. He's a big crook. <laughs> but so, do you honestly, come on, do you honestly think there is some God that lives on a planet somewhere that's not going to heal you unless you have an American Express card? That's not going to heal you unless you go to the bank and borrow $500 that you can't pay back and send it to him. But the God of the universe says it not only doesn't cost you $500 to get healed or to get free, it doesn't cost you five cents. It costs you to believe and to have faith in the teachings of those who came forward and said, this is within you, and if you will touch it, it will blossom, and it will lift you into higher principles. It is a very personal, very quiet, very beautiful, holy thing that you enter within yourself and stimulate and turn on that which is the glory of God. That's all you have to do. That's all you have to do. So Jesus is saying that from that point on, the religious would have to understand that the Christ, the Son of God, is in all human beings, inside of you, and that he is to be found at the right side. Don't you understand what you've seen? You can't find him in the left side. You've got to tithe that 10%. The left side is the side that has gotten you in this world in trouble. This thing, every war, how many, look at them. Have you seen pictures of what's going on in Yugoslavia? People are just standing with cannons and all of these high-powered weapons shooting them at buildings. They don't know who's inside of the buildings. They're just shooting them at buildings. People are laying all over the streets in blood. Women are crying. Children, men are crying. Nobody knows why they're doing it, but they're doing it because the left carnal side is exploding under the influences of this age, and people don't know what they're doing. And Jesus Christ is saying, from this point on, you will see the Son of Man, that potential in human beings, sitting at the right-hand side. Maybe it works. Did you ever think of that? 
Maybe he's right. Maybe if you do this, you'll be separated from all of that insanity. Have you ever been, can you ever conceive of sitting in a country like the United States of America, God bless America, forever and way, land of the free, home of the brave, and all your kids are on drugs, they're all dope heads. And you got revolution in the streets wherever you can look, and they're all still singing, God bless America, and the VF, don't watch them, the 4th of July. What's today? Next week's the 4th of July. Watch what happens. They're all going to come out. They're all going to be in the parks, and they're going to have old guys about 75 years old with flags walking out, commemorating the big battles that they had. Commemorating it. And yet, you can't, you got to have a drug outreach center in every town in this country. Put the flags down. Put the, put, the, put the trumpets down. Put all that crap down and start being what Jesus Christ, what Krishna, what Buddha, what the universe asked you to be. Human beings consumed in the oneness of this great cosmos, reaching out with arms to one another. Forget the people that we killed. Forget saluting the flag after it's murdered a million people. They're saluting their flag. We're saluting our flag. Everybody's shooting at one another. It's never been anything but that. Dropping bombs on one another, killing one another, and then having great marches to celebrate how many people you killed. And then you say, God bless America. You know what you're saying when they say, God bless America? God, screw everybody else. That's what you're saying. Keep us safe. Say Thanksgiving Day. Oh, we all gather around the turkey, don't we? Oh, we all gather around the turkey. And we got giblets and we got all those other giblets and joblets and giblets. And we all, oh, God, thank you for this meal. I'm glad you didn't give it to those people who are starving down the street. You gave it to us. We're eating, God. Look at this. Whoa, God. Can't have another piece of apple pie. Those kids are starving. Let them starve, God. I got mine. Thank you, God. And that's exactly the way it is. That is exactly the way it is. You're going to sit here and be thankful for your turkey while there's 10,000 kids starving to death in Africa every single day. They die like flies. But we're going to thank God because we got ours. The blessings he's given us, wow, great. The screwing he's given them, well, so what? Not my problem. Jesus Christ wasn't that kind of a guy. You're out of line with Jesus Christ when you get involved in that kind of a stuff. You get involved with Jesus Christ, you reach out to everybody. And what's important is that everybody has, everybody shares. I don't have any. There's no favored nations or favored people or anything of that kind of stuff. So Jesus Christ said, hey, you're going to find it sitting at the right hand of power. Look at it. Open up to page 886, John 21. Maybe you, can, maybe you can understand it a little bit when you see this in John 21. This kind of stuff goes over good in Greenwich Village, this kind of talk. It's not, it's not really accepted in Fork and River. You know that? People around here don't believe that. want to protect what they've got. John chapter 21, verse 6. What did Jesus say? If you want to catch fish, you know what fish is? What did your mother tell you fish was? Brain food! Why is it called brain food? From the earliest time, fish is always a symbol of that which is wisdom. God consciousness. Jesus says, you want to catch breath? For God's sakes, wake up. Get out of this pit that you're living in. And start to live. Start to, start to be a part of this. This is the most exciting thing happening in the world, and you're a part of it. For God's sakes, you're, you're reading the Bible. What's going on today makes this look like child's play. God's sakes, Joshua made the wall and Jericho come down. Forget that. The universe made the Berlin Wall come down. Joshua's wall around Jericho was like an outhouse compared to that one. Oh, well, Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. Big deal. It was nothing but a little bit of pipsqueak town. And people around. How about Russia? How about the Soviet Union was gone? You're living right in the middle of the Bible. Oh, well, I don't know. I don't want to see a miracle. This is amazing. I want to see a miracle. Berlin Wall's gone. Soviet Union. You, you want to see a miracle? Ask Gorbachev if he ever saw a miracle. He'd say, yeah, hey, for cock that this was a miracle. I never thought this was going to happen. And that's nothing. You're sitting in this country. Watch it change. Watch it change. <laughs> piece, by piece, piece by piece. Watch the banks go under. Watch all of this stuff go right to the ground. 
because Uranus says something, and it always has some, some something. You know what Uranus says? Uranus says, that which was taken from the oppressed, that which was taken from the poor, shall be returned. And there's nothing anybody in their white house or the black house or the pink house can do about it. Because the cosmos is going to do it for us. Get on the bandwagon and you can sit there. It's always been that way. You know what, Uranus? All the planets are spinning like that. Woo, look at them go. Aren't they something? Mm -mm, this is some universe. And all comes Uranus. Now, wait, i got to get this. Spin in the opposite direction. Do you know that Uranus spins in the opposite direction of all the other planets? And Uranus, the part that Uranus faces the sun is the cold part part that faces the dark is the hot part. Figure it out, because it turns everything upside down. It doesn't go by tradition. It destroys tradition. All of the traditional things that you have held so sacred are going to be flushed right down the toilet. Somebody ought to go out there right now, flush the toilet, and you can listen to them go right down the pipe. That's exactly what's going to happen to all of your traditions going away. Well, we can't have that. Oh, don't make any difference whether you can have that. You're going to have that. Because the people that have been oppressed and stepped on are going to be lifted up. And the second coming of Christ is right here. This is Sunday morning. And the third day he will rise again from the dead. And it says in the Bible that a day is as a thousand years. This is Sunday morning. This is the morning of the third thousandth year. And that's why the new age. You want to beware of something, they tell you? I tell you, beware of the old age movement. It is a... I almost said something. I shouldn't say that. But it is bad. So Jesus Christ says, cast your net to the right side. In 1 Kings 6, 8, it says they put the door to the middle chamber in the temple on the right side of the building. So he sits at the right hand. Jesus says you're going to sit at the right hand of power and you're going to see the Son of Man coming in clouds. That's an admonition to the religious. Huh? How are you going to look and how are you going to see Jesus Christ? How are you going to see the Christ? How are you going to see yourself? How are you going to see anything that is of God? You're going to see it coming in the cloud. Jesus Christ says in Matthew 6, 22, if your eye be single, your body will fill with light. Right there, you're in, all the time you go to New York, you see these people walking down the street and these what they call sarais, you know, these Hindu people. You see they've got a dot in the middle of their head. They knew about this. We just don't, they call them. They call them dot heads and all of this kind of stuff. Oh, look at that. You know? They knew about it. They have always known about it. They've always known of the center where God, God dwells. We never knew that. But Jesus Christ knew it. Jesus Christ said it's the single eye. It's the third eye. It's the seed of the soul. That's where God comes. That's where you see God. <laughs> but Jesus says in, uh, in where we're studying that you'll see God, uh, Son of Man coming in the right side surrounded by clouds. From uh, Hindus, Vishnu, it says, I, Lakshmi, reside in that cloud from which the waters of the rain pour down in that cloud adorned with Indra's bow and from which lightning flashes the cloud, the rain, the lightning. Now quickly, let's, I want to show you something why Jesus said you'll see him coming in clouds. And clouds <coughs> in mysticism means the unseen spirit. That's what cloud means in mysticism. Now look with me so we get some confirmation of this. Page 61 in the Bible, the book of Exodus, okay? Now I want you to look at Exodus chapter 16, page 61, all right? I want you to get, start getting excited about your life. I want you to get excited because I'm going to tell you something that I know. All heaven is going to break loose in this country and on this world in the coming months. And the coming years are going to be absolute revolution. Hordes of angels from heaven, which are impulses of light, are going to come. People are going to start seeing things. You're going to see things differently. People that are on the outside are going to be shaken to their roots when all of these things start collapsing around them because the shaking is going to take place. But you who are in the know of the light shall rise out of the grave, out of the tomb of your own lower flesh, and rise up to the third stage of consciousness, rise to meet him in the air, and there you will live with the Lord forever in that higher realm of consciousness. But those who are on the outside, the shaking will come, and it will affect them severely. And as I said, if you would sit right now and even think of yourself when you've been away from the meditation, or you can think of friends, you can think of family members, you can think of other people, you can watch the television, and the confusion and the violence and the shaking that's happening to the system is just the beginning. Jesus said that's like birth pains. You ain't seen anything yet. Is that bad? It's not a question of being bad. If I turn this light out, you can't see. Turn the light out. Albert, turn I want to show you something. You may not have known this. Known this. You may not have known it. Watch what happened. People on TV, watch what happened. 
Watch, go ahead, how are you doing? Great, isn't he good? Watch, now go ahead and read your Bible. You can't see. Why? Because we shut the light out. We've cut off the source of the power. It doesn't make any difference whether you like it or not. You may not believe that you can't see in the dark, but you know what? You can't. You can't read your Bible now because there's no light. See, but when you plug back into the source of the power, when you plug back into the Christ, show them what happens. Show them what happened. You plug back into the Christ, the light come on, you can see. You're outside of the shaking. There's nothing to worry about. You're enlightened. Everything is fine. So keep the light on. Keep the light on. It doesn't make any difference what you believe. It's when the light goes out, you can't see whether you believe it or not. It's not that God is doing anything bad. You're cutting the light off. You're throwing the switch. And that's what's happening now. Jesus Christ told you. He said it. In the Bible, when you see the man with the pitcher of water, enter into the house, that's yourself. Go to the upper room, and I'll meet you. He told everybody exactly what you should do. Very few people have taken them up on that. Very few people have met him, and so they've got outside of the light. The lights are going out all over the world because Uranus is knocking down the power. But there is a light, a divine light, that if you'll go with inside of yourself, you'll keep that light on, and you'll stay safe. If you don't, you're going to be in this room with the lights totally out. You can't read anything. You're going to be in your home. The lights of enlightenment are going to go out. You're not going to know what's happening. You're not going to know why the kids are acting why they are. You're not going to know why your mother's acting that way, why this is going on, why that's going on. You've got to get inside. You've got to practice the single eye. And as long as you do, you are standing under the light. Joshua said, I'm in a battle. I'm in a battle. And I'm going to get screwed up in this battle. So what I am saying is, let the sun stand still. What he was saying is, let me stay in the light until I overcome this battle. Christians, everybody all over the world have no idea what's happening in this Aquarian age. And what they're doing is, they're walking in the darkness, they're walking outside of the light. And when you walk outside of the light, you're going to get hurt. Walking outside of the light is like driving a car with no headlights on. Nobody's going to get killed. You've been warned. No, it's no surprises. Well, for God's sake, you say, well, why God let that happen? Yeah, yeah. What are you doing as a, what are you doing as a rainstorm? You can put an umbrella up. It's a big deal. Well, it's not supposed to rain. Okay. It rains, so you put an umbrella up. I'm singing. Yeah, Gene Kelly will put a splash on singing and anyway. Singing in the rain. Everything's nice, but you put an umbrella up. You're forewarned. What do you watch the weatherman every day, don't you? What's gonna happen? Oh, it's gonna rain. Oh, I'll get an umbrella, I'll put the weather. This is a weather report. This is a prophecy of what's going to happen. Nothing can happen to you if you do what this says. All hell can break loose in your life if you don't. Yeah, I do. Not bad. Okay. Let's do it. Oh, what do I have to do? Okay. Oh, this now is the, the hard part. You have to sit still. And, and, <laughs> and you have to be quiet. And that is hard. You might have to give up your couch one night. You might have to come here and stay for a half hour. Oh, I don't know if I could do that. Okay. Have it. Go ahead. Sit out with your friends out in the street to watch what happens. But you don't have to. doesn't cost you any money. It costs you a little bit of time. You've got to discipline yourself. And you know the hardest part? We've got to spend a half hour with ourselves. And that's pretty ugly. You know? Pretty ugly. But very easy and very beautiful. And so, oh, where was I? Oh, where was Exodus? We never got that. Exodus 16. You, you're there on page 61? Exodus 16. Look at verse 10. Look at the last line. Congregation of Israel, and they looked towards the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. Look at, uh, go to page 63, Exodus 19. Look at verse 9. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud. That's why Jesus said cloud. Look at page 78, Exodus 34. Page 78, Exodus 34. And verse... Exodus 34 and verse 5. And the Lord descended in the cloud. Cloud in mist... Now look at this one. Page 469. Psalm 18. Page 469, Psalm chapter 18, and verse 11. Watch this. He made darkness his secret place. Do you know what? 
Do you know the pineal gland of the brain, according to the scientists, shuts down when there's light outside? But when you're in the darkness of meditation, the pineal activates and begins to secrete melatonin, which kills cancer cells and strengthens the immune system. Look what it says. He made darkness his secret place. His pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. Isn't that great? But one last one, page 497, Psalm 68. Psalm 68. And verse 34. Psalm 68 and verse 34. Ascribe your strength unto God. His excellency is over Israel and his strength is in the clouds. Jesus says, you will see the Son of Man in the clouds coming on the right side, which means that part of you and the right hemisphere of the brain, if you activate that, will come with clouds. In the unseen spirit will be the universal cosmic God. You can have nice things in your life. You can get your money back. You can get all the things that religion and the system has taken from you and your family. If you'll do what it says here. And what it requires of you is for God's sakes just to sit still and start activating, start thinking laterally and activating that right side. Those of your family who have died, you can be reunited. All of this is yours if you'll sit and activate the right side. All of the lovely, what do you think? Do you think that there is a God up there that lets you have a nice mother and she's such a sweet thing and then she gets killed and that he said, to you, you ain't gonna see her anymore. Forget that, it's not the way it is. The children who have died, the mothers, all of the personalities, if we will get up there in this new age and start activating things, it will all come flooding back to us. All of this which is love, all of this which is glory, but you gotta do it and we're too damn lazy to do it. That's all it is. That's all it is. Because it doesn't require anything more than you sitting down and stopping and allowing that which is the glory of the universe through Aquarius. I wouldn't tell them we're buying off anybody else. The water. Tell them we're not buying anything there. It intoxicates you. Can't buy anything and buildings. you know what it does? You get so drunk on that wine that you say to the guy that's born again guy comes on television and you say, what the heck is he talking about? It's zero. I ain't listening to that. I don't even know what he's saying. Did you hear him? Well, I don't know what the hell he's saying. The intoxication of the new wine of the spirit. <laughs> so, but what did Jesus? So, so why is all this in symbols? You know why all this is in symbols? All still drunk. All of this is in. All of this is in symbols because it is absolutely necessary. You, me, nobody's going to get any of this stuff unless we do what? Unless first we enter within, shut down the lower flesh. In other words, we purge the ego, we purge the pride, we purge the religion, we purge the tradition. We come as a little child inward to the temple, then we'll get it all. We're never going to get any of this good stuff as long as we got this religion, the ego, the pride. It isn't going to come that way. That's why Jesus said something. Do you know that Jesus deliberately deceived people? You don't? Well, come on. Let's see where he came. Page 789, Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. And verse... 13. I'm in Mark. Matthew chapter 13. What page did I say? 789. Watch what he says. What did Jesus say? He says in verse 13, Therefore I speak to them in parables, because they seeing, see not. In hearing, they hear not. Neither do they understand. He didn't want them to understand. He didn't want them to see this stuff. He told them what was necessary for them to do. He wanted them to practice the single eye. He wanted them to take no thought. And all of the things that he has said now are available to you because it says only when he is alone with his disciples does he explain things. You a disciple? No, I am a disciple. Yeah. Have you ever practiced the single eye? I wouldn't do that, then you're not a disciple. Disciple means disciplining yourself to do what he said. If you discipline yourself to do what he said, when he's alone with you in here, he explains all things to you. But otherwise, it's all a bunch of parables because he says, hey, unto you is given to know the secret of the kingdom. In other words, under you is given to know the secret of yourself. But to them who are outside, it's all parables. 
It's like uh, Saddam Hussein running around with the secret of the atomic bomb. He doesn't want, God doesn't want people running around with this power. They don't understand it. So anyhow, all of this outrage, all of this blasphemy that the high priest says, go back to 805, we're going to wrap this up in Matthew chapter 26. We're getting very close to the crucifixion of Jesus, and I hope that you'll be here for that because that is the most amazing metaphysical and mystical story that the world has ever known. Matthew chapter 26 and verse well, 66. And the high priest says, well, 65, the high priest rent his clothes. He has spoken blasphemy. What further need do we have? Behold, now you have heard his blasphemy. Why did Jesus, why was Jesus blasphemy? Because he says he's the son of God. The Bible says so are you. And so the, the high priest rent his clothes. He's like, ah, they freak out. They freak out. That's what they do now when you tell them. Ah, ha, ha, they freak out. Ah, you're doing all this stuff. Lot of stuff. Cause it's not that that, you know what it is? It's a simple thing. They don't understand what's being said. That each one has that capacity to be the Son of God. And so it says in verse 6, says, what do you think? They answered and said, he is guilty of death. Now, I want you to hear something. He's guilty of death, right? He's guilty of death. Did you hear that? He's guilty of death. What are they trying yeah. to do? Yeah, we're, They're we're trying to save the yeah, masses the right by killing you know, out of, of them Jesus. And, um, Rip and this one out, and he will not affect the masses of people. Rip, rip this Jesus and take him out from them, and they won't have their minds disturbed. That's exactly what they... What are they trying to do to you? They're trying to save you. Especially for me. I can't. All right. Um, yeah, yeah, just a, a Al Vero did that. Bill, up the sound. Bill right Bill here with a letter. Box 569. Say Al, pay Let me tell you something. What they're trying to do now, see, is they're going to try to save you by doing what? Killing the Christ. They don't want it to be in here. They want it to be in the church. The mausoleum. They all assemble. And they proceed and they march and they say, sit still. Say nothing. Give us your money. Sing the song. And you'll get your reward after you're dead. Great deal. So they're going to save you. Same way they, you see, what they were doing to Jesus by killing him was trying to save the people from him. What they're doing to you right now by trying to kill the Christ out of you through meditation is save you from Jesus. They did it before. And so they spit in his face and buffeted him. It says in Matthew 26, 67, the face of the Lord is actually the higher knowledge and when they spit, it's a sign of contempt. Spitting in the east is a sign of contempt. The strike with the palms of the hands is to express negative energy and they do. So they attacked him to do harm, but they cover attacked with this, which is, don't know what they do to you. Remember when they attacked this building? And they spread all over it, Satanist building is a Satanist cult. What they put on the side of the building? Jesus is Lord. See? So they smack people. You okay? You okay? She looked look over there. Were you and me on? Oh, he jumped off the phone and put her on? <laughs> they smack him. But why did they smack him with? The high priest. By the authority of God, they smacked him. So they'll smack you. Oh, in Jesus' name. They'll smack you. In Jesus' name. And they're yeah. smacking you with the same intent that they smacked him. To get that Christ out of you. To kill him out of you. And then they said, in Matthew 26, 68, just look at that last one and we're done. Prophesy unto us, O Christ, who is it that hit you? Who smacked you? Unbelievable. You know what these people are? They've never changed. They belt you, and they're anonymous. 
He said, she they always do that. Now she was they always send me these the anonymous board. cards, a brother in Christ. You're a scuzzball, signed a brother in Christ. <laughs> they call you on the phone. <laughs> and they hang up the phone. Ah, you're going to hell. One guy used to call up, you're not going to be around here much longer. Jesus is Lord. <laughs> Tell me your name. So. so they, it's, it's, well, that's exactly what happened here. They, the Bible is simply telling you that those who come against you will never have the guts to identify them. They never say, that, the pastor never comes down here to see what I'm doing or, or to say, you know, you're a jerk. They never say a word. They never call me. They never write me. They send what? people. They send these guys with suits on. They all have suits on and ties and they come down here. Uh, what about Romans 29, 44? Yeah. How do you justify that? Get out of here. I don't justify nothing. <laughs> it's true. It's exactly true. Remember the one time I had, I had two of them sitting down there and they both had Bibles. And I had a Bible and every one of us had a different Bible. So the guy's saying, well, it says here, he is theist and thou And the other guy said, well, it doesn't say that in mine. I said, it doesn't say that in mine. Hey, that's not in mine. <laughs> but, you know, they, they never send, they never come. They send these lackeys down here. They tell you, hey. Or they get, remember the one night they came down there were grabbing kids as they were going into the bathroom. Uh, son, you're, you're in hell down here. This guy's a maniac. You ought to get out of here, you know. And then Sean Judson, God bless her, she chased the guy in the car. Pulled him over and said, hey, you you know, she laid one on him just in a second, you know. Don't ever come down here again and, and, and abuse my kid with this stuff. Mm. What I've showed with you, what I've taught you in this building has never, ever been outside of this word. You see this word, you see this Bible, you see the words of Jesus Christ. And what Jesus Christ said, you're a special person. You are something special. And just don't let the religious and don't let these, these, these institutions make you put you on a guilt trip. Sure, Edgar Cayce did signs and wonders because he allowed himself to be consumed by the Spirit. He believed it and he shared it, and you have to do the same thing, okay? So, that's that. When Jesus was attacked, he held his peace. Well, I, I don't necessarily hold my peace, but I'm, you know, he was better at that than I am. What is it? Romans 29, Come up here, Lorraine. Come on, Lorraine. No, Here's your it's opportunity gone. to be on TV. Lorraine's moved back to uh, Barn again. All right, then get up here, Lorraine. See. Yeah. No, you don't. Sir. Here, here, I'll put this on. You can. Here, this is Lorraine Barton, ladies and gentlemen, an old friend that had moved out of uh, town and went to greener pastures. Now she's back. One thing that I want to share with everybody is, it, it's so true because when I left here, I missed church. The light went off, and that hit the fan. Literally, what hit the fan like? No. <laughs> really did. I mean, it really it was it was not good. And when you wake up, and it hits you right smack in the face. Yeah. It's like, oh my God, what have I done here? You know. So he, it's it's so true when you shut that light off. And you and then you start thinking on the left side. And my left side is not like the normal left side. I mean. <laughs> It goes, and it goes, and it goes. That's the normal left side. Oh, oh. So I just wanted to let you all know that um, I'm back. I'm home. And I'm yeah, but that says medication. move the ball in the dirt. snow or something. I couldn't stronger. figure that out. And don't walk away from it, because if you do, you know, if God doesn't do anything, God does not leave you, just things happen, and it's, it's, it's a heartache. Okay. Thank you, Lorraine. Okay. Well, you didn't waste any time to get back on there. Podium, did you? <laughs> That's great. She's great. And, and, and this. Let's go. Thank you very much for being with us. When you're done with this tape, send. Uh